are the three dots. When you get to the three dots, you want to enter the calibration menu. Uh, if you have a password, you should enter it now. You should be able to clearly see all four targets within uh, each of the cameras. So you should see two targets in each camera. Go ahead and click Next. After you click Next, it says Select a Pattern. So this is the wrong pattern for us. So we're going to go up to Pattern and we're going to select Pattern 2. And so here's the pattern that we can use. You may be able to buy calibration sheets that are other patterns, and that might help with automatic calibration, but this is what we have, and so this is what we're going to use. And so the next thing you do is you start looking at the settings in the calibration parameters. Uh, I kept the lens at 8077 because um, I don't know any better. Uh, and that's what came from the factory. The sensor is 225. That's written on the cameras. I think that's right. Uh, the next thing you have to put in are your different uh, offsets. And so the first thing we have is the front offset. That's the EG uh, dimension. And the EG dimension is going to be the distance from the front of the truck to the edge of the, um, the, the first target. And so for us, that's pretty well even, so we're going to use maybe five millimeters. Now, as a tip to get out of this menu, you'd think you can push that green button, it doesn't work, but kind of drag up here, uh, and it doesn't select anything else, but it allows you to go ahead and go to the next, uh, next field. And so the next thing that we're going to put in is the AD dimension. Now for us, both um, targets are uh, lined up with the front and back of the vehicle, and so that's going to be pretty much the length of the vehicle itself, which for us is 48, 44 uh, millimeters. And so then um, we have the dimension AB. And the dimension AB is the dimension um, between the two uh, black targets. And so for us, that's going to be 2200 um, millimeters. Okay, and so. That's the calibration parameters. Now we're going to select our model. Uh, what I have selected for a car is Toyota uh, 15 Prado. So that's the closest thing we have to the 4Runner. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, minimize these calibration parameters and start putting in the lengths and, and all of that of our truck. And so I think I've already got those auto-populated. The car length in millimeters is 48.44. The car width in millimeters is 1925. The wheel base, which is uh, from center of the wheel, the center of wheel is 2789. The front track is the dimension uh, from wheel to wheel this direction, and so that's about 1600 millimeters. The front overhang is the, the dimension uh, from the center of the front wheel to the front of the vehicle, and so we've got that set at 864. The uh, rear track is the dimension between the, uh, the center line of each of the rear wheels. We've got that at 1600 millimeters. And then the rear overhang is the dimension from the center of the rear wheel to the back of the vehicle. And we're going to have that set at 1092 uh, millimeters. And so now we're going to try automatic calibration. And yeah, it, so it failed to detect. And so since we maybe we don't have the right. Uh, calibration covers so we're going to go ahead and do manual calibration and so when you go to manual calibration what you'll see is you have these points and when you select the point um, you, you see that in most cases it's already lined it up to the correct point uh, but if it's way off you can actually drag them uh, large distances but once you get to uh, the correct corner I like to kind of dial it in fine-tune it with these arrows up here and so you do that with all of the readings and you, you hit confirm to go to the next one. Okay, and then we're going to do that for every image that, uh, that is on the screen and, and make sure that all of the corners are adequately called out because this is going to change the, the way that the lenses are distorted by the software so that they produce the best uh, photo. You just keep repeating until all of the corners are taken care of. So let's go ahead and look at some of the settings that we can uh, play with. The front track, when you turn it on, it shows a, 
a projection on your screen and you can change what that projection is by changing track type and so you can cycle through the different kinds I'm gonna go ahead and turn the front tracks off um, we have a rear track that's very same um, the track type changes that one as well rear auxiliary is I think the most useful one it has the red and yellow and green lines that kind of show you how far away you are from something and so I'm going to leave that one on overhead size is how much are you zoomed in on your car and so you could go all the way out and have a big picture or you could zoom all the way in and have a really tight picture of what's around your car um, I actually like it to be somewhere uh, just right a center uh, around the 35 uh, mark but that's up to you as far as your preference the brightness uh, sets how bright your picture is if you set it all the way up and right now it's kind of dusky at my house uh, you risk having a scenario where you get the colors that are kind of washed out. I like to set it a little high, uh, somewhere around 120, 121, something like that, because uh, I think that looks the best, at least for my screen and my um, viewing situation. Contrast, what that does is it, uh, it either sharpens the lines that are there or uh, kind of washes them out. I like to put it a little bit towards the center, maybe a little right of center, somewhere around 108, 110, something like that. Um, so we have saturation here. That affects the way the colors play with the camera. And so if you pull it all over the left, it, it makes things kind of grayscale. If you pull it all the way to the right, the colors really pop quite a bit. And so, again, I like it to be somewhere a little bit right of center, somewhere around 106, 108. The reset to factory settings option here that you can always use. Um, so I'm going to obviously not hit that. So let's go ahead and go all the way down to the last two uh, portions of the menu. Uh, so you have side view settings. And so uh, if you see here, this is the front camera. And so you can change the display range to show kind of how much that camera zooms in or out. And so I like to be able to see the edge of the car. And so I'll set my, you can set it all the way to the right and it'll show as much of the edge as it sees. Uh, but I don't like to see more edge than I have to, and so I'll, I'll kind of set it to where um, you can just see the edge of the, of the car. Now, um, we do have this offset angle, and so the offset angle kind of plays with how much up and down this thing uh, does. And so you can go all the way to the right, and it, it's kind of looking all the way down. You can go all the way to the left, and it's kind of looking all the way up. And you can see it doesn't have hardly any of that edge in there. Uh, no matter how far you zoom out. We're going to zoom out a little bit and try and get as little distortion as possible. And so play with these settings. See exactly what you want to see. We can see that the targets are really close to the edge of the car. And so in my view, if I can see kind of the edges of the targets, I'm, I'm pretty happy. So the final settings I've settled upon are 95 uh, for the display range and 16 for the angle offset. The last menu we're going to look at is the blind zone setting piece. And so um, if you don't set this correctly, you will see fragments of things on your car in the 360 view. And so if you, if you put that um, all the way to the left here, you can see you kind of see some gray spots. That's actually the bumper of the car. And so what you'll do is you'll increase that until you have a pretty good indication of you're only seeing the ground and so if you recall uh, we set the edge of our target up to the kind of the edge of the car and so that's where I'm going to set mine we also have the rear blind zone so you see here do you see how the uh, license plate is visible so that's obviously not part of the ground and so we're going to kind of increase this until we get just to the edge of the target and what that tells me is that now in my 360 view I'm really only seeing things on the ground and not fragments of the car and the camera. And the fi final thing we have is this side blind zone. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just set that all the way in for now. Uh, the cameras are far enough out on this car that we should be able to see as much of the side as we possibly can. Uh, but we'll see what it looks like. The next thing you can do is go to the car model. Um, it comes with an SUV. It happens to be an Audi. Um, it looks okay. Uh, I've got ours set to black because ours is uh, black. Uh, you can change the brightness of the SUV. You can change the shininess of the SUV. Uh, but I like it really dark and really black. And you can even turn the logo on. If you hit the Get More button, you can actually pay 
uh, I believe a Chinese company, um, and they they will have one for a Prado, which is similar to the Forerunner. Uh, we may do that. I'll I'll let you guys know how it goes. Now there are some additional fields in here that you can set that will help you to customize the way that your 360 camera looks. Um, so the starting engine to rotate that means when you start your car it, it one of the flash screens that shows is a rotating uh, 360 camera I like that feature I'm gonna leave it on um, you can have it default to the rear camera uh, when it pops up um, you can have a floating 360 panel that when you turn that on has a popped out window that shows up that you can close if you want but by default that comes up um, I don't have anything set up for recording so I'm going to disable that. Uh, maybe in the future I'll set up a recording device to the USB so that I can um, have that. You can have a turning delay which is, is how much the camera uh, delays whenever you're turning. You can have a reversing delay. Um, you can actually have a, an emergency light delay. Okay, so we're going to test out the final product. So let's look at a 3D view of the vehicle. And so that looks very good to me. Um, it shows the edges of the targets. It shows the ground fairly well. Uh, very nice. So if we go back and we want to turn the car on and off, you can turn the car on and off by selecting the 360 round view and it makes the car come on. And so if we look at the 360 view, you can see here, uh, now of course this is the Audi, but if you upgrade and buy something else, you might be able to uh, see a, a Prado there that resembles a 4Runner. So you can cycle through the different views. So this is the front view, and we've got multiple ones. We've got the overhead view, we've got the just true camera view, and then you've got uh, the, the corrected front camera view. Um, here you have the rear view uh, with that auxiliary uh, kind of measuring thing. You've got it kind of corrected. You've got the uh, just overhead view and then you've got the uh, just camera view in and of itself. Um, the next one is the uh, left side view uh, or you can see kind of a zoomed out version of that left side. Um, you can see the right side view or the zoomed out version and then just the right side uh, right corner. Uh, that's good for parking. And then here is another view where it shows both sides of the car uh, and you can flip it and see uh, both sides of the car pointed towards the back. Um, if you have a recording device selected, you can go ahead and hit the, this button here and it'll take a picture. You can see here my picture failed because I don't have uh, any recording device. Overall, I'm really happy. It looks really good and uh, that's how you set up the device. Thank you guys for sticking with me. I know it was a long install video. Oh, a big thank you to King Sev and his uh, team there at Car Trim Home. Uh, they really went the extra mile in supporting me in the install. Uh, so good luck, everybody, and leave any questions uh, you have in the comments, and I'll do my best to reply to them.